Hello and welcome to Diecast Restos. This week I'm customising a Triumph TR6 by Hot Wheels. My aim is to replicate my brother's father-in-law's TR6, which means taking some drastic action to return this to stock. This casting has been around since 2009 and is set up as a track or hill climb car. It's missing a windscreen and passenger seat, plus has an added roll cage. This takes the place of where the lowered canvas roof would sit. So these photos are what I'm using for reference of this 1972 TR6 painted dark blue. The casting is lacking bumpers, in addition to the windscreen and passenger seat, so I'll need to do a fair amount of work to replicate it accurately. I've also sourced some visually similar style steel wheels, which I will show off later. I've got a spare window piece that fits really well too. For the interior, I've got some 3D printed bucket seats. I will need to rework the fuel tank and existing seat a little to get them to both fit. The wheels need cutting out, and while I have my wire cutters to hand, I lose the roll cage too. This thing gives a good indication of the space I have to play with for the hood. There are some bonnet latches that I will need to grind down later on to return the original look, but I won't be reducing the extended arches or bodywork since some detailing will lessen them, I hope. But for now, I drill out the two posts, lubricate and then thread them ready for two M2 screws later on that will replace the lost rivets. But now to paint strip. I've recently customised a TR7 where I talk about the history of the TR, but I spoke little about the TR6. It was introduced in January 1969 with most early models set for export, particularly to the US. The US spec cars used a carburetted version of Triumph's 2.5 litre straight six, as had been used in the US exclusive TR250. The UK and other global markets received fuel injection. While the fuel injected car produced 150 brake horsepower, the US spec produced 104. UK spec cars could reach 120 miles per hour and fetch 60 in 8.2 seconds. The TR6 featured a four-speed manual synchromesh transmission with optional overdrive. It had a walnut dashboard and an optional steel hardtop. As you can see here, I've begun modifying the interior by lopping off the headrest, cutting out the fuel tank and chucking away that basic steering wheel. I drill a hole so I can mount a more accurate three spoke one, which has been 3D printed. I dab some Gorilla Glue inside the opening and push the new wheel in. 91,850 TR6s were produced between 1969 and 1976. 83,480 were exported leaving 8,370 for the domestic market. Now I can begin filling in the gaps left in the casting by the rollover hoop and start to form the basis for my canvas roof. I push two small segments in each of the cutouts. I can file these smooth later on. I then pop in the interior to draw a guide for sizing up my folded hood. There's a bit of milliput stuck to the interior from my filling so I must remove that. But I can now cut the putty down to an appropriate size using my crafting knife. I regularly check up that all fits correctly and make adjustments accordingly. I've previously used this method to create a canvas roof on my build off custom Chevy Caprice, which lost its roof in its transformation. After it has been smoothed, I leave it to set. I've also filled in beneath the passenger seat. Once it is hardened, it is coated in Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. I'm really happy with how this has gone so far. I'm never one to go wild with interiors, but it is kind of necessary on a roadster. These are the wheels I've gone for, which look very close to how the post-1969 model wheels appeared. I've gone for staggered to emphasize the dish at the rear. The interior I've just painted gloss black, which I'll detail a bit later on. The steel style wheels were painted silver on the real deal, so I'm doing the same here. There's more detailing to come on those though. 
Next, I file down the rough, dried milliput on the body. I need these to be invisible on the final product, so this takes some refining. I also use my sanding sponge to smooth it all off, including the areas where the latches were ground off earlier on. All is looking good, so before I begin attaching my custom bumpers, I coat it in primer and examine the finish. I'll use some wet and dry on these areas, just to be sure, since it'll be reprimed with the bumpers anyway. I'm using some 1mm thick aluminium rod for these, that I bend and cut to size. Both front and rear bumpers will be glued using my trusty Gorilla Glue Gel. It's the first time I've done anything like this, and it's a bit fiddly, but I hope that the results speak for themselves. The main points of contact are the very corners of the rear bumper, as the sides aren't perfectly flush. Still looking good so far. This is all coated in primer, and the bumpers will be chromed with Molotow pen later on. It's certainly looking far more stock now. The rims had a chrome surround, so I've used some of that aforementioned Molotow around the outsides of each. To recreate the walnut dashboard, I first used my Artistro Brown paint pen to draw it in, and then used the black pen to colour in the central wheel trim. With the body primer set, it now receives colour, Tamiya TS15 Blue. The body will be coated three times to ensure good coverage. I then add in the centre caps and the nuts to the wheels. One minor difference with these steelies is that they come with five instead of four nuts. Next I add in dial surrounds to the dash using my narrow chrome pen and draw in the chrome on the spokes. Now let's take a look at the finished wheels and compare. I'm really proud of these, even if they are a bit too low profile. The black of the dials and the holes in the steering wheel spokes are then drawn in. The interior is really coming together now. I size up the axles before detailing the body. These front wheels are definitely going to protrude a bit as they are so wide but that's something I'll overlook for this build. Now on to exterior detailing. I fill in the black of the grille with my Gloss Artistro Black, while the rear, which was matte vinyl, gets the matte black Uniposca paint. This difference will be very apparent once it's dry. Now I can go wild with my Molotow Chrome pens once more, drawing in the headlights, bumpers, tail lights, door handles and locks, fuel filler cap and side repeaters. I apply some using a narrow brush in the hard to reach areas. The tail lights and side repeaters are coated with orange and red sharpie for that translucent effect. I also add in the rear badging. The front turn signals are drawn in with Artistro Orange. And I again use the 1mm Molotow to complete the front end detailing, including the badge within the grille. There's also small TR6 badging on the rear quarters that I attempt to replicate. Then it's time to douse the entire thing in Citadel Gloss Null Oil. This transforms the look of the lighting very effectively by giving it greater depth, making them not look quite as clean and beaming. It's also really useful for emphasising the panel lines. Sometimes the casting lines alone are just not enough. But we are now approaching the end of this mammoth build. It's been great to return to detailing a casting based on an exact real world car. So much so that I've just about managed to write the registration with my Artistro pen. The dash is the last to receive Citadel in an attempt to give it that glossy wooden look. Now though we jump to reassembly as the windscreen requires the model to be assembled to attach it. The interior piece simply slots in over the front post, and the base with the wheels attached levers in. Both posts are secured with a 3mm M2 screw. So here's that window again, borrowed from a Matchbox 27D Mercedes 230SL reproduction. I lose the guide as it will be glued directly to the body. 
After smoothing that rough edge, I give the outside a lick of chrome paint. Once that is done, I apply some glue and I can fit it. Before I give too much away, here's a reminder of what I started with. This Track Day Triumph TR6 by Hot Wheels. In order to replicate my brother's father-in-law's TR6, I needed to lose the rollover hoop, gain a windscreen, gain a passenger seat, gain some bumpers, and gain some replica wheels. Not too much to ask them. But seriously, it's been a great, fun project that has pushed my skills, and it's a result I'm certainly proud of. And here it is now, with pictures for comparison. By far and away, my favourite part of this custom is matching the accuracy of the wheels, albeit a bit lower in the profile. It's a decent casting to begin with, just with the usual Hot Wheels over the top raciness. While it retains its wide arches and big front spoiler, I feel they've both been toned down by the presence of the other detailing. I'm pleased with the interior and body modifications, the folding roof looking particularly effective I think. The bumpers were difficult to get right, and they are far from perfect, but I've learned a lot in the process. Again, the windscreen was a bit of a compromise, but seems to have turned out okay. But anyhow, that is all from me for today. If you enjoyed this build, do leave a like and your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and check out my Instagram and Patreon for all the latest. All that leaves me to say is thanks for watching, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.